All right, we're going to go over troubleshooting ventilator alarms. We're going to go over every category, uh, high pressure, low pressure, disconnect, things like that. Okay, just to make sure that you're troubleshooting properly and not getting alarm fatigue and just ignoring it or just waiting for your respiratory therapist to do it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to go over is high pressure alarms. Probably your most common alarm. Uh, usually it's uh, it's usually coughing and secretions. It's usually the first thing we look at. Okay, if we have a patient who's uh, gagging on the tube or they're coughing or bucking the tube, you'll hear this beep, beep this high pressure alarm, and that, uh, that might key you into the fact that they may need more sedation, okay? Or they need to be suctioned, okay? So what you do is we'll suction them, and hopefully that gets rid of it, okay? Now you notice I have a high pressure alarm going off right there. Why isn't it fixing it? Because you notice that I, I suctioned and I didn't take the catheter all the way out. Pretty common, pretty common mistake. You want to make sure that that we see that black line. It goes past, and we're out. So we have a non-obstructed airway, and that's a pretty common. Uh, it's a pretty common mistake. Uh, you'll look at the ca the catheters there. Okay, uh, kind of a rookie mistake. You do it once or twice, you probably never do it again. Okay, but kinks in the tube. Okay, if we get like uh, stuck in the bed rail, we'll get a. Pressure, high pressure alarm. See that? Get any little kink in the tube, and we'll get something like that. So you got to be careful. Take a peek structurally how the tube is laid out. Um, make sure it's not kinking. Uh, make sure we're not. Uh, the ET tubes are getting a little bit more pliable these days. I'm noticing that there's a they're using cheaper plastic or something. So these will bend on you. Okay, and so make sure that we're not getting a uh, alarm that way. Okay, very. Uh, very common uh, lately. Um, another thing that we're, we could look at is probably maybe we have a patient uh, condition change. We have a change in lung compliance. Okay, it could be pulmonary edema. Uh, that could give you higher peak inspiratory pressures. Um, you could have very profound bronchospasm. You have a tight patient who has uh, asthma or COPD and they get super tight and they need a bronchodilator. They, uh, but they could actually get high pressures from that. Uh, ARDS, you get a patient who's just declining, they're getting sicker, they're getting those uh, tighter lungs. Uh, that could also cause you uh, peak pressures. And the important thing to do with that is talk to your respiratory therapist, see if you get uh, check a plateau pressure, which is uh, a measurement we do on the ventilator that'll show um, the average of the entire lung rather than just the, the high pressure. And it'll show us uh, kind of if the lung is getting more tight. Okay. Another thing, uh, pneumothorax, that's, that could be one of the things too. We All of a sudden, uh, we lose a lung and we don't see uh, adequate chest rise on both sides, or we don't hear breath sounds, it could be a pneumothorax and that could cause a um, high peak pressure. Another one that I didn't put up here, alarms. Um, check with your uh, respiratory therapist, if we have a lot of excessive alarms and you troubleshot all these other things, maybe the alarms are set inappropriately. Maybe the, the, the alarms are set too tight, as we say. So uh, that's, that could be another factor, okay? So we look at all these things. We look at uh, adequate sedation. We look at they need to be suction or there are uh, tube kinks or anything like that. Uh, we look at the disease process and then we'll look at the alarms and that could be one of the things that we're um, that's making the ventilator beep. The other main alarm we're gonna get is a low pressure alarm, and usually it's a vent disconnect. So let's say the vent pops off the patient, you hear air blowing, and you hear this alarm, and that's usually what it is. You do a quick troubleshoot, pop the vent back on, and we're good, right? Um, there's other things, though, that could cause a low pressure alarm. Um, for instance, a vent dyssynchrony. So let's say the patient is not adequately uh, sedated or the vent sittings are making them breathe uh, in a way that they're not able to uh, complete their breath cycle and, they, and it may trigger this low ventilation alarm because they're not getting a full breath and that'll trigger this low pressure, low minute ventilation alarm. Okay, and low, minute ventilation, if you didn't know, is the rate times the tidal volume, okay? So say we have a rate of 12, times 500. 12 times 500 is 6,000, okay? And, but we'll measure it in mils, so minute ventilation will be six, 
Okay. So, someone breathing 12 at 500 ventilation, ventilation is six. Okay. Um, and so, one of the things about uh, if you're getting a low pressure one, maybe you have an alarm uh, setting. Maybe check with your respiratory therapist. Maybe check if the minute ventilation uh, minimum is too low, because that could be it too. Okay. Also, maybe we have a cuff leak. Okay. Our patient, we have our ET tube in. Now all of a sudden we get this beep. Okay, we're looking, we don't see any kind of uh, disconnections. Everything looks appropriate, the vent's going crazy. You're looking, you may not even hear a leak. You may not even hear this air escaping. Okay, but check the cuff pressures. Have your res either do this or have your respiratory therapist do it. You feel the cuff pressures and then Maybe they have a manometer that they're checking, they could have a slow leak if this happens over and over again. So that's one of our uh, uh, things that we could check for, for low pressure alarm also. All right, some last minute pearls about ventilator alarms. It's very tempting to get into this alarm fatigue situation and just keep silencing it and silencing it and silencing it, okay? See if you can troubleshoot, see if you can find out what it is, patients biting, disconnect, maybe they need more sedation, things like that. Uh, look for the obvious stuff. Look for stuff, air blowing. There's a lot of little parts on the vent that could pop off and air could leak out and you hear this whooshing. Yeah? Make sure you don't just get into this uh, mode where you just you're just ignoring it. You never know, this patient might not be on the ventilator. Okay? They may have just popped off and they're not breathing. Okay? Also, when in doubt, bag. Okay? It's okay to call your respiratory therapist. Can't figure it out, try to troubleshoot it, put them on the bag and bag them until they get there. Okay? Hopefully this was helpful. Thank you for listening.